What's up, guys? And welcome back to another episode of The Plowcast. I'm Paul, and this is my co-host, Evan. Hello. And this episode, we're going to be breaking down chapter 15, 14 oh. of The Mandalorian. <laughs> Almost got it wrong. The Tragedy, season two, episode six. Um, mm-hmm. Excellent episode, let me just say. And I kind of want to get it right out of the way. Thoughts on Boba Fett and his return? Oh, boy. Man, that was, <laughs> that was something else. Um, he, everything about him, I just, that was just great. I loved the, the voice. I love, because obviously it's Tamar Morrison. I loved the action. I loved the armor. Him just, like, shattering Stormtrooper helmets and, like, talking about, you know, whatever. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up, does this mean we have like concrete canon uh evidence that Django and Boba were or at least Django were official Mandalorians. That's it, yeah. The so, way yeah. I interpreted it, um, because I, I I saw the comic, I saw a comic recap of it on YouTube, uh storytelling of the it's it was non canon and now with this I guess they're canonizing it, but about Django and his origin story. And like he was a little kid on a farmer's planet, and Death Watch, it, it was the Mandalorian Civil War, and Death Watch and the true Mandalorians came in. And what happened was his dad, Django's dad, was a cool guy. He sheltered, I believe it was the true Mandalorians. And then Death Watch came in and like messed everything up because it was a civil war. Mm-hmm. And the true Mandalorians, I think, took Django, or it might be the other way, Death Watch. But anyway, right. uh, Django was a foundling in this comic. And then that's what they said. That's what Boba yeah. said. So I think that's like, they haven't directly said it, but I think that's the origin they're going with Django. But in that comic, Django, his little sect of the Mandalorians kind of die off. So that's what we find him in the beginning of the Clone Wars is he's just a bounty hunter. He's no longer a Mandalorian. Like, I guess not practicing, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. So I, I would think that means Boba's just... Just his son. He has no ties. He wears the armor, but I don't know if because Boba did in the episode. He said, or like I don't. Uh, I just do my own thing, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Which, um, yeah. Go ahead. He what? Yeah, they. Mando uh, said he was. Was it Mando or was it Boba that said Django was a foundling? Because I think it was Boba was talking about it, and and Din was like, so he was a foundling, and then that's it, yeah, that's yeah. right. But it was also like the armor was passed down, I guess. Those the, it's the obviously not the same means? armor, but all right. So that statement was just uh, wrong. Um, apparently, it is the same exact set of armor, uh, other than the helmet, because the helmet blew up when Boba tried to kill Mace Windu in the Clone Wars. Um, but it is the same set of armor, just passed down to Boba after Jango died. Uh, and obviously, Boba repainted it to his liking. Yeah, like because that was... chain code was huge. Yeah. I'm not sure if like those are just letters or one symbol is like one guy who had the armor. I'm not sure, but I think that would pro- yeah. it would probably just be like like a it would be just like a a description of the of the person who owns it, like a full lit like uh, species and age or date of birth or something like a full breakdown of the person um because boba said he's had it for what was like 25 years or something like that okay so So like the display that came up that's just like oh i'm boba i'm cool um (laughs) but like boba saying it was passed down that wasn't actually written out because i don't think anyone's translated what was actually written out i don't i don't think and i don't think a, a chain code would have this was passed from blank to blank it could um but i think it being under his name is enough um but even because we've seen we've seen boba in the clone wars when he was a cadet and then when he was a bounty hunter and throughout that time he's growing up we don't really see him do a lot of mandalorian things like he's a bounty hunter he's not but but here and later on, it seems like he likes to stick to the Mandalorian kind of co- or a code because we know there's different different groups and different little. Um, but like in this, like in this episode, he he 
says that because that he got his armor back, they have to help protect the child. And that's part of the deal. And he won't, it's like, he won't budge on that. Like, as if, you know, that's like his way, like, you know, Mando has his code. Hmm. This is the way. This is um, my way. <laughs> I I think, um, or at least I guess this is my head cannon, my head cannon ter- territory. Um, <laughs> but like in, in the Clone Wars, Boba, he was like, he was a teenager. And I feel like he was just fueled by revenge on Mace mm-hmm. Windu. Like he wanted to get him. And I feel like as he grew up, um, you know, bounty hunting, seeing what the universe galaxy had to offer, he probably developed that sort of code. Uh, it is yeah. like, it's a very honorable one with like, all right, I, I made a promise. I'm going to follow through with it no matter what. And I feel like that does come from maybe Mandalorian background, but I feel like the the um, bounty hunters guild is a lot like that too. Yeah, where, I mean, like, Django could have like brought him up that way though. And if what you were saying about that comic is is partly true, where by the time Boba comes around, Django is is out of the is not a part of, or he is, but his group doesn't exist anymore, and he's just doing his own thing. Mm-hmm. He could have brought Boba up, t- talking to him, and like maybe telling him stories about the Mandalorians or, or teaching him to act because maybe Django still acted with the Mandalorian code in mind. Like he still, you know, was like he would, it would be something he would pass down. So maybe that's just how Boba is generally. Uh, it just happens to fall in line with Mandalorian code. And this, this is there could be some Canon other thing out there that we're just completely missing. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, a, this is assuming this isn't like fact. This is just assuming on what we know uh, personally. So, um, but they, Tamora Morrison, that when, when you just see his face, it's like, cause you knew that's what he looked like all these years, but this is the first time we're technically seeing him under the helmet, like ever in, in the, in the first episode of season two, but just like, being able to see it and like him with the, you know, that's him. It's just, it's pretty, pretty trippy. I want to address all over Twitter and Instagram. I've been seeing the Boba dad bod <laughs> <laughs> thoughts on it because I personally, I disagree. I feel like, I feel like it's just the robes. Like he's, he's got on those tattooing robes. Like, of course it's yeah. going to bunch up and make him look like a big belly. I feel like he's still, fit like he was kicking ass i yeah, feel like he, he once I, he gets his full uniform back no more dad bod that's what i mm, think that's that's true uh he i i didn't even notice it until i saw something like that uh, yeah in the episode <laughs> i was so enthralled by what mm. was going on i didn't even realize but like also it, technically he's he's genetically modified he's a clone so can clones get overly fat like that i mean if unless they're like like shoveling food down their face and um (laughs) like we saw in season seven echo when he was stuck in that in uh uh, wat tambor's you know machine he lost a lot of weight is his face was sunken you could see his rit like yeah so they can lose and gain weight but also how much of that is is different from what Django's body would have been like I feel like they're probably, I don't know about Boba because he's definitely is a clone, but I remember them saying, I, I feel like he's not genetically altered. He might be like a direct copy of Django. But it's I feel like, clones, like, I thought it was just the age. It might be com- no alter- al- uh, alterations yeah. at all. I thought it was just the age, but I could be, I could be wrong. But I, I feel like clones would be like genetically predisposed to just mm-hmm. be hella fit and, <laughs> you know, warriors. Yeah. Yeah, now that you uh, say, I think I think you're I think it's I think you're right. He's not modified at all, or uh, it, like very minimally to the point where it yeah. doesn't really because he is still technically a clone. So there's going to be some like yeah. probably something. Um, but like just seeing him in the armor, like beat the crap out of stormtroopers, and like the the his theme, like the musical, like the. Or like that horn that played every time he did something like that was just, oof. It was, was so, so cool. nice, dude. Um, I guess we can get into it now. But I mentioned, 
in, in the reaction video, my my thoughts on Star Wars villains. Mm-hmm. I think what they're what they have done already. Like already, Boba could die next episode. I really hope he doesn't. I feel like he's redeemed. Ah, don't don't but jinx Star anything. Wars, yeah, I, I I won't say that again. But but Star wood. Wars like <laughs> it has this trend of having super cool villains and they die off in a movie or two. Like Boba, like Maul, I mentioned Grievous, Dooku even, he was only in for two movies. Um, I get, I was, I'd bring up Krennic, I think I brought him up before, I liked him yeah. a lot. I get why he was only a movie, since it wouldn't make sense to keep him. But even yeah. still, they're just gone in a movie. I would, I like, of course, what they did with Maul, bringing him back, fleshing him out. And they had him kind of behind the scenes in the canon. And now with like, since we have so much open territory between the end of episode uh, six and the start of nine, like I feel like this Boba Fett they've brought back, or like I said already, awesome. He's redeemed for me. He's on the same level as Maul with just smashing Stormtrooper helmets <laughs> and exploding them like watermelons. So cool. I felt like a little kid watching that. <laughs> but it just has me so excited because they have all, like there's years potentially, uh, like canon years that, in Star Wars timeline, that he could just thrive, still being a bounty mm-hmm. hunter, still tracking down people. I am right. so for it. Right. Um, but a yeah, lot of that, people like, don't. Um, they the problem they have is they don't like when characters come back from the dead, regardless of how good it's done. Because I I know there's people out there that like Maul in the Clone Wars. I love it. It was great. It was really like his character was really great in it and Rebels. But I just don't like the fact that they're bringing characters back from the dead. So, like, you can argue, you can feel both ways about it. You can be like, wow, that was insane. But at the same time, you could be like, yeah, but like, he he already died for me years ago before I knew any of this. So, but that's not me would, personally, but that's just how some so, people. I got that's a perfect because I'm, I'm going to bring it up. Um, I feel like there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. Uh, I feel like Maul, it was like teetering on right because personally, I, falling down that shaft and like being half of a man, literally, maybe not. But what makes me believe it is seeing him as a as a Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally crazy. He's a broken man in yeah. that state where Savage Press found him. He's basically dead. Mm-hmm. They built him back up from the dead. They didn't just like they did. I, Palpatine kinda. In the sequels, yeah. but they just forced him in. Uh, they announced yeah. on Fortnite <laughs> he was alive, <laughs> and they forced him in. And even more in the same film, Kylo Ren and Rey, when they're like death swapping, force healing. Mm-hmm. I was not a fan of any of that. No. I feel like that's the wrong way to do it. And yeah, with Boba, yeah. I feel like the Sarlacc. I I'd be interested in learning more. We really don't know anything. I think they kind of hinted that the crate dragon killed the Sarlacc. Because, like, that was its diet or something. Yeah, they yeah. Said. Um, but I feel like the way they're bringing him back, I feel like they're redeeming his character. Because he's always, we've always been told he was a super deadly, efficient killer. Yeah. And now we're seeing it. And yeah. I, I, I might be biased. I actually, <laughs> I 100% and I am biased. I'll admit that. That's okay. But, I, I feel like they're paying it off in a good way. Whereas like in episode nine, they just, okay, you're alive again because we need you for the plot. Yeah. So um, that would be my like kind of c- counter to it, but I get yeah. it. Cause like, if like, like every time on, on screen, if I see a death, I'm gonna be like, Oh, he could come back. So uh, there's really not an impact. So I know it's like, you, you shouldn't do it all the time, but for some of these characters that were underutilized, I'm a fan for it. Yeah, and that it, and it adds more when you go back and see them in their original content. Um, I, I think one of the reasons Maul was so successful right from the start is because Maul, the first time we see him in not like in uh, Mother Talzin's orb, the first time we see him physically, he is so different from Phantom Menace Maul. Like if we had started and it was just Phantom Menace Maul in his robes. Like, and like maybe some prosthetic legs sitting in a cave, like, oh, hello. Like, we would be like, eh, but the, he's so different and so the opposite end of the spectrum from the last time we've seen him in canon that you're like, whoa, 
okay, this is, I know who that is, but if you didn't tell me the name, I think that was a completely new character. And I think that's, that's why it works for certain characters like that, where, where when you bring them back, it's still them, but very different. And you can, there's something to work with. It's not like just more of the same. It's adding on to it instead of just, oh, look, it's just the same guy from episode one. You know, it's like more interesting the second time around. That's, that's, that's exactly right. And I don't want to, because I always do fanboy, but worth mentioning, the person behind those two examples of a good way, like Boba and Maul, (laughs) Filoni, he's been behind both of them. He's been there chilling the whole time. Give that man more responsibility. More. More. Yeah. Um, Yeah. No, but what you're saying with Maul, how, like, at first glance, okay, he's a cool guy. Seeing him as a spider, I'm like, who's this <laughs> whack job? Like, if I if that's how we met Maul, like, besides episode one, I never saw episode one. I saw that. I wouldn't. It's like the dynamic they bring in is just it's so good, mm. and it looks like they're on the right path with Boba. Yeah. I wanted to address yeah. that. Well, break that still fits with it because Boba. I think that still applies, though not as much. Just a little bit. Um, think think back to episode one, or I guess it would be episode. Uh, nine, I guess, of season two, episode one. So I think it works a lot better um, that the first time we see Boba, he's not just he's not just wearing his armor. Because then you're like, oh, well, that's already Boba Fett. When, when you slow, like, when it's different and you're slowly brought, because we know it's Boba Fett because it's the, the face, because we know what he looks like. We know he would be scarred. It's Tatooine. His armor was already there in the episode, but if he had just like disregarding the plot line, if he had just showed up at the end fully armored, it's yeah, we would have, it would have been awesome to see, but overall for the story, I think it's, it's a lot better if you have it slowly reintroduced. And even in this episode, he doesn't have the full set. Like he doesn't have like, I think he's like missing the shins and like thighs or like bicep, unless it's just like cloth, but I don't, I, is it complete? I think he's, he doesn't have like the under, the undersuit that he wore originally, obviously. Yeah, he was well, like he was a hermit <laughs> in uh, season two, episode one. Yeah, um, but you knew it was him, so that's what made it. And, oh, exactly. Um, but I'd like—I don't know if they'll explore it more about how he specifically got out of the Sarlacc pit, but like, like they could have easily just said, "Okay, yeah, he he just literally flies out. He repairs mm-hmm. his jetpack and flies out. No problem." Mm-hmm. But no, they chose to make him all right. He doesn't have his armor. He what's what's he have? He has Tuscan Raider weapons, right? You know the right. staff and the gun. So you can just from that alone, you can tell. Oh, he's been resourceful. He's been scavenging on Tatooine, building mm-hmm. himself back up. Yeah, and he didn't he didn't confront Mando right away. And I feel like that's on purpose. I feel like he had to track him and see. All right, what's this guy about? Because I can't go right in. I don't have my armor. I'm not prepared. And. Yeah. That's like, like you said, if I just saw Boba, all right, awesome. I love Boba, but building him up just adds so much to the character, mm-hmm. to like the person underneath the helmet. Definitely. And that's what, that's what I like. That's why I'm saying I'm, I'm excited to keep yeah. watching him. Yeah. And clearly he's been, you know, he's been bit like he's got, I think that, that, uh, that staff he was using is, um, is, a. Uh, Tuscan Raider one. I think I've seen them have like with the hook and the the round disc with the hook poking out. I'm pretty sure that's a that's a Tuscan Raider. Do your best Tuscan Raider noise right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think um, there's a name for him. The staff. It, I think it's like yeah. I, I heard it somewhere. It's, I don't know it, but it, it is it is a Tuscan Raider yeah. staff. And I know the gun. The gun is a cycler yeah. cycler rifle. And another um, like with. With the fact that Boba is a clone, that could be, I don't, I don't think it was intentional or like, it might've been, or like anything at all to do with him being a clone. But when, um, uh, what's her name? The bounty hunter lady, uh, some Etta or uh, something, Etta. I'm not sure. Sharpshooter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, when she was like talking to, when she was talking to Boba, when he was in the slave one, he was like. He was answering her, her commands kind of like a soldier. He was like, he's like, I don't remember exactly what he said, but the way he was, he was responding and like saying like, yes, ma'am type of, it was, it sounded very 
very clone or soldier like, which I just some to just put. I don't know if it means anything, but I'll have to look at that scene again. But just think about all the cool things we could have or like conversations we could have because he's a clone. We have Ahsoka in the show. And one thing that I thought about was uh, a, what if we see like flashbacks to maybe when Din was younger or something and we see clones and like one of them has his helmet off and it's Tamar Morrison. So like we get some cool stuff like that. Um, or a big thing I was thinking about would be a big scene with Ahsoka and Boba. Boba comes up, you know, he's got his helmet off, so he sees him. He takes the helmet off. She sees a clone, thinks, oh, damn, Order 66 lights up her sabers, and, and then everybody's, like, pointing guns at each other. <laughs> and they could have, like, this conversation. Like, them two would be able to have a conversation about about the clones and, like, about, you know, what the war did for them. Like, she could talk about how, like, one of my best friends would was was a soldier and he looked he, he looked exactly like you and it's really weird and he could talk about how he's not he doesn't have a chip he's not anything he's just basically just another Django fan I think we could get some cool scenes or conversations not not just with Ahsoka but with other characters about about Boba's like past or or you know history of him being a clone I that'd be an awesome scene <laughs> like the western standoff of Ahsoka yeah. she's getting ready Mando's yeah, in the mix too because he's on both sides. Like, mm-hmm. I think that'd be because other than Rex, Wolf, and Gregor, the last clones she saw, they were trying to kill her. So yeah, for all like, she knows, he could still he could still be programmed to Jedi and you know attack her. So I think that could be a really cool scene. Um, and I think I I like to think Ahsoka will be a part of it, but I think the fi- like the finale and what they're setting up with um it's Mayfield, right? The they failed, Bill I think. They fell. All right. Yeah. Um, Mig- but I Mig's feel like they're, they're getting the whole gang together. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I know for sure the sharpshooter, I forgot, I forgot her name, but Fennec? her, Boba, Fando. I think that's it's right. F E N N E C. I, I feel think. like it is Fennec. Okay. I knew it was Fennec. Yeah. But we have all of them already. Grief Cargo will probably be mm-hmm. there too. Um, and Cara Dune. So like yeah. we already have all those guys. I feel like Ahsoka will end up. Hop in the mix too. Oh yeah, was probably still, because of Grogu. So like, yeah, there's a possibility we see that yeah. scene. <laughs> and even if we don't, I think uh, a big part of last episode was is potential setup for an Ahsoka spinoff, which is some rumors I've been hearing. No, I haven't seen any Disney really, but like it's because we got the Thrawn drop, and that was kind of it. Um, I doubt they would fit him in this somehow they could maybe like as a sting at the end of an episode, but like Thrawn as a main, you know, like another main villain with a plot line with only two episodes left. And we already are pretty cramped. We're going to be pretty, pretty crammed. I doubt Thrawn would be a part of this season. It's going to prove me wrong when like two weeks, but, <laughs> but like, you know, Ahsoka, it's such a popular character at this point. They they would be stupid not to make a spin off. The amount like the amount of people that would watch that would be insane. Um, and I feel like that was really good setup for it. Uh, so maybe if we don't see her again in this sort of crew that Nando's building, it might be because they have plans to use her in in her own show, um, which I think would be really cool. Uh, that's just our Clone Wars bias coming out. That's all. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd be head over heels for in the second yeah. show. Um, the but group, no, I, we were talking about the how he was getting a a sort of gang together to to yeah. go. I think that could be cool. It's kind of like a kind of like Suicide Squad, but good type thing where they got this little crew. You <laughs> hey, know. hey! I <laughs> caught some slack for Suicide Squad. <laughs> I, I'm a D, I'm a DC sympathizer. I I I liked Wonder Woman. I will say that. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. Um, yeah. But, like, I, you know, like, we got, obviously, Mando and Boba, which is great. Fennec, if we could get, obviously, they're going for Mayfeld. Um, possibly Grief and Kara. That's already, like, what, six people? Um, yeah. So I don't think we'll get everybody. I think we'll at, at least have Fennec, Mando, Boba, 
Kara Bo-Katan? and Mayfeld. Um, may, maybe, because if they're going to, most likely, honestly, because if they're going to face Gideon, yeah, her whole, whole storyline in in Mandalorian, when the episode she was in was about getting the Darksaber back from Moff Gideon. So if they're going to take on Moff Gideon at any point, the Darksaber will most definitely be involved. And now Mando, with the spear, has a weapon that he can use against the dark. So there's going to be something there. And I think with the setup for Bo-Katan, or Bo-Katan earlier, she's going to need to be in there somewhere. Yeah. I thought, um, like if they, I, I agree with you about the Thrawn aspect, how I don't think they'll bring him in this season, other than mm-hmm. the name mention. Mm-hmm. I thought they might, but I, the time I would have, like... When when we went to Moff Gideon's ship after they captured Grogu, I thought he would like report back to a big hologram, and we'd see we would see Thrawn. Yeah, and it would kind of be like Thrawn is the next emperor, and Gideon's kind of like the next Darth Vader almost, mm-hmm. and like yeah. that kind of dynamic where Thrawn's the big bad, like the the guy in charge of him. But we didn't see that, so I feel like they're not going to go that route. I feel like they'll go more towards the route of there's kind of a power struggle yeah. where both Thrawn and Gideon want to be the new emperor. And they, I don't think we'll see them struggling this season. I think it'll be just Gideon, but right. I think we'll see Ahsoka go to her show fighting Thrawn and then yeah. Mando and Gideon and those two kind of not universe because it's the same year, but those yeah, two yeah. kind of stories will end up colliding and like, who knows, maybe a huge super crossover oh event. God. The end game <laughs> of star Wars. Television. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I mean, it's not completely out of the question. I don't think because we, it's po- it's possible if they do. I think it would be like, um, like a cliffhanger tease at the end of our next episode or the finale if they talk about Thrawn more. Um, it would be just like maybe the last ten seconds. He just Gideon. I don't know. Maybe they beat Gideon. And like he ran away or something, and he looks up at a hologram, and it's just Thrawn, like looking down. But it wouldn't be any big, big character because people they still need to, they would need to properly introduce the character for those who don't know who Thrawn is. You know, they would need to have. And at this point, with two episodes left and two big plot lines and so many characters, I just don't see them realistically having him as a real character instead of just like a cameo. Which is why I think they're going towards the route of an Ahsoka spinoff rather than, you know, him being with this group with Boba and Mando and all that. I agree. But yeah. Speaking about things you don't think will happen this season, check <laughs> this segue out. Come on. Wonderful. Um, Grogu and his little four speaking meditation about. thing. Yeah. Um, obviously he, he got it off. He made the call. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. We just have to find out if anyone else answers the call. Right. I, I'm on the side that my all right, here's my top pick. My top pick is Luke. Mm-hmm. Then I'm thinking Cal Kestis. Mm-hmm. Then I'm thinking no name new Jedi for the series. Mm-hmm. But kind of like you and Thrawn, I feel like there's no way this is gonna happen this season because it's just too much. We've yeah. had like a reveal every episode. I don't think they're gonna jam Luke Skywalker. On top of the big battle they're setting yeah. up, that would I that would make a lot of that'll be upset. like the next thing. So. Yeah, yeah. There, um, but your thought? Yeah, I don't see them cramming in more than they already have, because compared to season one, uh, season one, pretty much the only thing we had connecting the the rest of the of the universe, other than you know, like he's a Mandalorian, they exist here. The only th- thing we had connecting other things was Tatooine and I guess the Darksaber like other than that there wasn't much this se- there wasn't much that was like brought back I guess I could say but now this season we've already had Boba Fett twice we've had Bo-Katan we've had Ahsoka we've had, had Grand Admiral Thrawn we've had this we've had that we've had a Jedi Temple or whatever I just don't see them put and I eventually no matter how much you enjoy it, it's just going to turn into like a big, it's still the Mandalorian is the show. It's not the Mandalorian and not these nine other characters that you've already seen before. So similarly, similarly to Thrawn, I think if, if it's 
a Jedi we already know, like if it's Luke or something, it would be like a like a stinger at the end, like a Marvel credit scene, but at right at the end, like a cliffhanger cameo thing where I don't know, maybe they saved the day, they won. Mando's sitting there with Grogu and then he looks he looks over and suddenly like a ship lands and like a Jedi walks out and he's like, I've heard you need a heard you need a master or something like that. <laughs> um but just with the with I feel like next episode is gonna be part of it's gonna have to be getting Mayfeld. Um and that would probably take up a couple maybe like 10, 15 minutes, depending on what they do. Like if they maybe they could start when he's already there. So if they're doing like a let's build up the gang for the big attack type episode, especially then, we really wouldn't have any room. So there's a lot of stuff that could happen, but just not this season. And I was I was saying that a lot in the reaction. I was like, whoa, he finished. He he was done his meditation. What now? Is the Jedi just gonna walk up and there's gonna be nobody there because they left or something like that? But the I they I, we know there's gonna be something. Because they, they're not going to just have, oh, they went to the temple and he did the thing and that's it. Like, there's there's got to be some sort of payoff to that. Yeah, I I feel like um, it's more on the, um, like, down the road, I guess, back burner kind mm-hmm. of storyline where what Mando was doing, like, it made perfect sense for him to get there and finish that. But then that's like a story for another day. We'll We'll have to wait. For that mm-hmm. Jedi, whether it be Luke, whoever, um, to come in and kind of interact. And yeah. it might not even be a Jedi, it might be a Sith. Um, but I feel mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I feel like probably that's not even I, I they probably have a plan, but I feel like they're not focused on that aspect. I feel like they're gonna hit the Empire hard, like Moff Gideon type stuff for definitely the next two episodes, maybe even at or season three. Um yeah. and then bring that Jedi in. Yeah, or whoever it may be, but it definitely opens up the floor. Like that, I feel like that was a good way to. Now there's a lot that can happen. I that's like, it's good to have your show have open ended stuff where you can speculate on. Yeah, because it leads to stuff like this when we're talking about. They did that Um, last season too with the at the at the time the unknown person who walked up to Fennec's body on Tatooine, which we know now was was pretty much it was Boba Fett. But they had that dropped in there, and nobody knew. Um, they had at the end, or they already had a new goal, which was to get the child to his people and find a Jedi or whatever. So they had stuff that they they started one season, and that gets continued in the next. Season. And every show has that. There's little seeds that they plant early on that later on down the line, they're they're like, okay, we're going back to this. Um, yeah, but there's there's definitely a lot of that this season, a lot of potential for for different things. Um, I just, I think the thought of who is this Jedi or what Jedi will we see is so just exciting to uh, see where they go from there. And obviously if they don't, they don't show it this season, we'll have to wait a whole nother year or possibly (laughs) more. Um, But at that point, you know, it it better be pretty good if they're going to make us wait that long. Hey, so far with all the like, anticipate like this season's been awesome they've <laughs> i've i've not been disappointed once with this show so i i'm i have high expectations like luke coming yeah. back that's high but i still feel like if it's cal or a new jedi that i could like fall in love with like i have yeah. with mando yeah. um i feel like i have good good hopes for whatever's to come yeah i even commented on uh sebastian stan's um Instagram. He posted a, a video. It was called 2020. It's just him in his house doing quarantine stuff, washing his hands. And I commented, I, I don't know if it's... Yeah, it's near the top. It's got almost 2,000 likes, and I wrote, Luke Skywalker casually cleaning his house. <laughs> and a bunch, of, a bunch of people like that up. Um, but that would be so cool if just the last 10 seconds of season 2 was just Luke Skywalker walking off a ship, staring at Grogu. Oh. It's got to be the next Yoda week. was his mat, like especially. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, duh. He gets he yeah. lands in X wing, hops out of it, sees <laughs> a, a small little Yoda, and he's like, "Oh boy, here we go." Yeah, because Luke, Luke only knew mm-hmm. Obi Wan and Yoda, he's, right? Like Ahsoka knew the whole Jedi Order, but mm-hmm. Luke, 
this would be his third Jedi he'd interact with. At least, yeah. well, he might have been finding other younglings so far, but for real, it, it would be a trip, I feel like, for him. He might even say, oh, baby Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ahsoka almost did. She said Yoda. She, but... she name-dropped Yoda. Yeah. yeah. Um, my, only, my only concern with Luke is that I I haven't I don't know the timeline as well from at this point in the series into the sequels, but wouldn't around a couple of years from now, especially like wouldn't that be around the time that Ben Solo starts his training and Luke has that? So where does that line is this going? Are we going to see Grogu go to the temple that Luke had or not that like the the like where he's training these new Jedi? Are we going to see that and then? We know well eventually that all burns because Kylo Ren kills everybody. So that's my my only concern is, I think I think they're at some point in the show they're gonna have to maybe even this season try to connect it to the sequels and bridge the gap a little bit just out of necessity. Um, that's my only concern is that you know this this could be getting into some weird like ter like it could be starting to become a sequel. I don't I don't know if I really want. Baby, I don't know if I really want Baby Yoda to start like being a, a cause or being there for the setup of of the sequels. If that makes sense, I I might have to disagree. Here's my thought process. Mm -hmm. I feel like like they've already have hinted at um they're gonna like flesh out more of the sequel because all right, I'll, I'll say it. I hated the sequel. <laughs> I like Kylo Ren, who would be yeah. part of this story, which is why yeah. I'm kind of supporting this. But I didn't. No one liked the sequels. A yeah. lot of people say don't touch them. A ton of people saying don't even canonize them, <laughs> <laughs> which is funny. But I, I feel like, and I'm trying to keep an open mind because, again, I honestly, those movies stink. But <laughs> I feel like if, because we're happening, Mando is from five to ten years after the events of Return of the Jedi. I so think we it's have, nine years. Yeah, I want exactly. to say nine. Like right now, I feel like season one was close. Season one was five. nine, I think. Oh, season one. I was don't nine. think it was very much time very much time between one and two. Okay. Well, either way, it, that's only still, yeah. So so we still have time before because mm -hmm. Han and Leia still have to get married and then <laughs> have a child. And, and then he has and to then grow get up. Divorced. <laughs> yeah, and then divorce too after. But so we still have some time before we mm -hmm. get into that territory. But I feel like if ah, this is getting super speculative, but if Grogu is a part of that, like imagine you see Kylo Ren and his Knights of Ren kill Baby Yoda. Oh my God! But that he's like would be a Yoda. Slap across the face. Uh. Yeah. But it would it would get me more invested in the sequel. Uh, yeah, and a little I bit. Yeah. Like, and here's where I'm going with this because the Clone Wars. That gets me so involved with the prequels, which again, a lot of people didn't like. Mm -hmm. Dave Filoni behind the Clone Wars. You flesh out that era of Star Wars, and a lot of people, like from our generation, that's their favorite trilogy. Yeah. And I feel like if it's done correctly, if you bleed this Mandalorian into the sequels and you have maybe another show, I feel like the Mandalorian can't cover all the mm -hmm. sequels, but another show to do the behind the scenes work like the the Clone Wars did for the prequels. Yeah. You can really turn public opinion around for those movies. I oh, think, yeah. the, the, of course, they're still going to... Definitely did with the prequels. the prequels. Yeah. The problem with the prequels was like the kind of the writing, I feel like, was off. But the story was good. Yeah. So the, the sequels, world. I feel like... The sequels, I feel like the story was all like lacking. So mm -hmm. it might be harder to pull it off. But I it, it pains me to say it. But I want them to to keep pushing into that sequel trilogy yeah. of like I, like yeah. territory. I I do I do agree with that. But there's a couple things I want to say to that. I I kind I mean I don't want them to turn Baby Yoda's story from what it was, which is this this dynamic with a f sort of father figure. That like is this own isolated thing. I don't want them to turn that into mostly sequel stuff. Like if he's there and like stuff is happening around him, I don't mind that. But if his story goes from what it was, which is this unique individual thing, and if they just shove it in to to make you know for the sequel, like 
I wouldn't mind if he was somehow a part of it. It's not, I'm not saying like, I don't, I don't want him at all near it, but if they turn his whole development into just sequel setup, which people already aren't fond of, I I'm, I'm just not going to be too happy with that. Um, but I, the idea of, of them fleshing out the sequels is, is definitely something I also approve of. And the other problem I have with that though, is what's after this? Star Disney is going on this high Republic thing. There's the been no announcements for, <laughs> for any sequel, any sequel related things. Like after the prequels came out, obviously it was years later, but we got announcement that they were going to get Clone Wars, which was going to be this whole, you know, long show that was for the, but the sequels just ended. And now there's nothing else slated for them that we know of other than I think they said they're, I think there's supposed to be a Rebels sequel show coming at some point, and maybe this Ahsoka thing. But other than like, there's no planned that I know of planned sequel continuation or time period piece like we like we got with Clone Wars and with Rebels because they're advertising all this High Republic stuff, and we we're getting books for that. So if the only if the only build up we get to the sequels. Like I'm all for making the sequels better and adding stuff to it, but if the only place that they do that is in the Mandalorian, which is supposed to be its own thing, I'm gonna be I'm gonna feel kind of like, well, all right, well, I'm not gonna, I don't think I'll enjoy that as much because I feel like Mandalorian works better as its own thing, pulling from the other you know movies and stuff instead of just being just like set up essentially what the Clone Wars was. If yeah. that, that makes sense. No, I feel like that's. I feel like what you're getting at is that, which I I I kind of agree with, but I do like them doing other things. But I'll say it. Um, it's that the Mandalorian should just be the Mandalorian mm -hmm. because it's it's on both ends too. With them pushing sequel, I, that's why I said I do want another show like Clone Wars that's dedicated to sequels. I think Mandalorian should. I, I would say because I want I want Kylo Ren to kill Baby Yoda. All right, that's <laughs> my head cannon. But I I, I kind of agree with you that I don't want them forcing it down our throats. Yeah, um, and it, and like I was, it goes on the other end too. Like, okay, you can bring Ahsoka in, you could bring Bo-Katan in. All right, you can bring Boba in. But at the end of the day, this is the Mandalorian. I love mm -hmm. all these characters, but like that's why I don't want them to bring Luke Skywalker in and have him kill Moff Gideon. I want to see Mando. Do yeah, it. and I, I feel like you're right. A lot of people are calling. They're not even calling the Mandalorian like a Star Wars TV show. They're saying it's a space western, mm -hmm. and I think I think that's how it should be, because it's so popular. I want it to stand on its own two feet, where I could just watch it, and within its own TV, like within every episode, I can know. Okay, she's a Jedi uh, talking about Ahsoka, but I don't have to know anything else about her to enjoy the Mandalorian. Yeah, I think her episode worked as being its own thing even to somebody who doesn't know anything about her. We learned base, the basics of what we needed to know, that she was a Jedi, she survived Order 66, her master was Anakin, which everybody knew, and she knows what happens with the dark side when you screw with that. That's all you really needed for her involvement. Um, and yeah, like sequel, more sequel stuff is, is good. I Well, not movies necessarily, but stuff... More stuff <laughs> that makes the sequels better is good. I'm going to rephrase yes. that, because not, yes. not just more sequel sequel crap that just doesn't <laughs> do anything tackle but, another trilogy <laughs> right my my biggest problem though is that there is none that they've announced anyway they seem to be moving on from it this high republic thing there's already like books that are on pre-order i think and they had this big video talking about it and we've seen concept arts of of young yoda so it seems like they're 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 moving away for like if we had a oh yeah we're gonna have sequel movie a sequel movie B and then sequel show running. I would be like, yeah, okay, maybe we can, you know, get a little bit of sequel stuff set up in the Mandalorian. But I feel like there's nothing else planned. It's it's not that I don't want to see that happen. It's just that there isn't any happening that we know of. So if there were to be sequel set up with the current Star Wars media, they would have to shove it all into Mandalorian which I just, I don't want to see. 
obviously I'd like to see like the seeds of it happening because it does happen eventually. Like, oh, maybe they, you know, they're showing like the beginnings of the first order or whatever, but I don't want them just turning this individual show into some sequel setup crap. Like I don't and because I haven't seen anything else that's being planned, um, dedicated to the sequels, um I'm just I want them to stay away from it until they they figured, you know, something out. Because what what do we know that's coming out? We know there's Kenobi, possibly Ahsoka show. Um, there's was talks about a Rebels sequel show. Bad Batch, that's Clone Wars era. That's not even close to the timeline of the sequel. And we're getting um, uh, High Republic, all this new stuff. So I just don't see... I mean, if they start announcing some sequel stuff, I'm like, yeah, sure, why don't you just pack a, just a little bit into this, but... You know, I just don't want them. I don't want them turning this into into something it shouldn't be. Yeah, I feel like the lack of a clear plan going forward is definitely a problem. the mm-hmm. The optimist in me wants to say they're not touching the sequels because of how poorly they were they were yeah. received. Yeah, the optimist in me says, "All right, the Disney execs are are saying." Let's let the fire cool off, and then we'll hop back into it. Um, but then yeah. the, the pessimist in, in me says they have no idea what they're doing. Yeah. And <laughs> someone just said, oh, let's do a super prequel. And then they just kind of <laughs> ran with that. And it kind of looks like it's because even in uh, – I play a lot of video games. Even in the video game world, they handed the license over to EA, and they produced two games – I'm not counting squadrons as a game because that was just rushed out at the last second in 10 years. I feel like there's like, there's so much you can do with star Wars and the lack of a clear plan is definitely a bad thing. Mm -hmm. They're just going off what happens. Like there, if, if this is becoming sequel setup, then basically their mindset could have been, okay, let's just hand it over to somebody else for this Mandalorian show or whatever. Let's see what happens. And then, oh, everyone loves it. Okay, well, if they like it and we put sequel stuff in it, that means they'll like the sequels, just like Clone Wars, which is not how it works because you need to make it good for that to happen. But that that could be their mindset going into this. Okay, they got one season. Now that we hooked them, they're in. They love this show. (laughs) Now we can just shove it full of stuff to hopefully try and save this trilogy and, and... tell people this was the grand plan and psych it is good you're just dumb and you can't see the future so you know, there's a, there's a lot that could that could be happening i i definitely believe there's a lot of disney people saying exactly what you just <laughs> said but the i still have hope in me that dave filoni and john favreau are fighting them off tooth and nail mm-hmm. to keep star wars pure mm-hmm. and keep putting out the beautiful work they're doing make star wars pure again oh uh, this man. this is why i've said it before just give everything <laughs> to dave filoni literally like just to hand it over i want george oh. to come back be like nope i created this i'm taking it back and here you go dave you take here's the, the keys to skywalker ranch here you go yeah Have also him. george if you're listening uh we would love to come to skywalker ranch yeah uh yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no i i feel like the yeah, I feel like it's. I don't want to say Disney because it really could have been any company. Because Star Wars is so profitable, I feel like yeah. if you give it to a company that's not under George or under Dave or someone who loves Star Wars, stuff like this is gonna happen. They yeah. just want to make money with it. Like when you give it to EA, they just want to make money with it. That's why they canceled support for Star Wars Battlefront Two. Yeah, it wasn't profitable. But yeah. if 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 it gets back in the hands of George or into the hands of Filoni, and it already is in his hands, but I mean, like, the whole scope of it, I feel like we'll start seeing a plan. I Like, we'll have a mm-hmm. future in Star Wars to look forward to. Yeah. <sighs> um, I think we got on a little sequel rant again. <laughs> we always do! We always do! <laughs> um, so, let's just hook it back right into the episode. Uh, yes. A couple other things. The Razor Crest. Getting blown oh, to smithereens. My goodness, I'm not over. That, it. I'm still on board. That was the the intro clip for our reaction. If you want to go check that out. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> that literally, while you were you were talking there, I was in my head. I was like, 
oh man, they're gonna like blow up the slave one or they're gonna blow up the razor, but I don't wanna like interrupt what you were saying and you were talking <laughs> and then they just it just exploded into it wasn't even like a slow motion. It just oh, just it just melted. Gone. Dude, I was <laughs> I felt so stupid. I was talking about I was talking about how Bobo was like <laughs> a total bamf getting to the levels of mall. And I was doing the little head things, and then I was like, yeah, yeah, you're so cool. And boom, I literally just stopped. Just I was your taking them back. Yeah, it was – that was crazy. I didn't that, see that coming. Uh, you know what's funny? Literally, like, a week ago, I just built the uh, Lego <laughs> the Lego Razor Crest. Literally just built it. And then now I have to, like, go hit it with a sledgehammer or something to make it accurate. It has to be screen accurate, um, dude. Also, <laughs> was his – was his face pulse blaster in the ship? That thing is gone. He didn't have it on him. His rifle's gone. His blaster's gone. Because uh, yeah. nothing survived other than the little the top the gear shifter knob piece or whatever, and the Beskar spear. So his super cool rifle that is like a staple to him is like what just gone now. That I didn't even realize that. That's a huge I, F. I mean, maybe. Maybe he'll just walk out next episode and it'll, it'll just be on his shoulder. Oh, he just it was in the ground. But like, yeah. I didn't. He didn't have it all episode. He only had his pistol, and the only thing that seemed to have survived would be his jetpack because it wasn't on the ship, and yeah. and the spear and Boba's armor, which is a good thing he grabbed it when he did because if he waited, it would, I would, it would. Well, that is best car. It would have taken, taken a hit. Um, yeah, is but it, I feel is like it best car. Yeah. Because I don't know, because Mando's was Durasteel in season one, in episode one. I'm near. Um, so I, I, I want to say like yeah. Car. And I know Boba painted over it, but now mm -hmm. we're seeing it peel back yeah. since it's so warm, and then we're getting that shiny Django. Yeah. Um, but I want to say it's best car. Yeah. I'm not certain on that. And uh, speaking of that jetpack, we were talking the whole time about <laughs> this whole ep. None of this would have happened. Well, I mean, at least. Grogu getting kidnapped wouldn't have happened if Mando just, like, when the Empire came, if he just took his jetpack and just, like, like put it back on. Because <laughs> then when you see the Dark Troopers coming super slow, just falling, he literally could have just blasted up, grabbed the child, and just dipped. And, yeah. like, that would have been it. <laughs> I feel like, I, I don't know why they chose, I guess it was, I don't want to call it lazy writing. <laughs> but I feel like, like, even if he got it, if they wanted the the de dark troopers to get away, no problem. They still could have if he went and got his jetpack. Yeah, just if they were just, just have him get his jetpack and he chases them, and then oh, they shoot him. Yeah, and he's he's out. Okay, right. cool. They still got away, but like it didn't make any sense for him not to. <laughs> it's the one thing like <laughs> that I we're literally just them. climbing up a mountain the whole time. <laughs> yeah, like like all right, I understand he took it off because there's a whole deal. Him Boba. And and Fennec, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but yeah, like I know why he took it off, but dude, just go get it. <laughs> Wait a minute, can you just when you said I understand, you you cut out there for a second. Could you oh, just repeat? I, was, uh, I said yeah. I understand, like why he had to take it off in the first place. Oh, it yeah, was yeah, like yeah. the him, Fennec, and and Boba. Boba so like, yeah. yeah, okay, cool, but <laughs> just go put it back on, man. <laughs> It doesn't seem like it's a very complicated thing. Like just, I'm pretty sure. It's just, yeah, boop, <laughs> good to go. Also, he, I don't get why he kept trying to grab Grogu out of the Force shield. Like clearly, you're not getting in there. He did it three, three times. damn times, three and the times. second time it knocked his ass out for like 20 minutes. If he was there, they could have. I don't. It would have been a little different. Um. Yeah. Also, a couple other things I wanted to point out. This isn't like saying, oh, the episode was bad because of this, but I thought it was funny, and I thought it was very Star Wars-esque that uh, the Stormtroopers had Stormtrooper aim until Mando showed up when he had Beskar, which they can hit. Suddenly, <laughs> suddenly when he showed up, every shot was hidden. He was getting hit in the face, right in the shoulder, right in the, right in the chest. Suddenly, but because it's Beskar and he can get hit, they were suddenly on target the whole time. Um, there was a, basically there's a lot of easily avoidable situations in the episode. I thought another another one yeah. was with the uh, the um, the big rock and the e web church guy. <laughs> like the boulders rolling down, 
So instead of like moving out of its path a little bit, the stormtroopers just run away from it and just get crushed. And the guy on the e web turns, he just starts shooting at it. Like this trying to, he literally just starts shooting the turret at it. it just hop off the turret. It's going to get smashed anyway. <laughs> so just get off of it. But I, oh, man. I'll, I mean, I'll like, shoot it. <laughs> that's pretty Star Wars Stormtrooper, though. I mean, you can't help but you can't help but enjoy it, especially like I don't flank them, you idiot! Boom, dead. Yeah, that, I was gonna mention that. That was real funny. Yeah, that's not that's it's not. I'm not saying this as like a, a like a knock on the episode, but like just it's funny that you know this is still a consistent thing within within Star Wars that stormtroopers are going to be stormtroopers, which doesn't really yes. make sense because they're like brought up from children as cadets and trained to be like these troopers but they they still act like morons on the on the battlefield um but you know just easily avoidable situations and some dumb stormtroopers always you know always add some fun to it i like how when boba came out with his armor they literally just half of them just turned <laughs> and ran away he killed like four of them, and they were like, "You know what? Nah, this no, we're done. Goodbye." Yeah, like, okay, you got <laughs> yeah, it, they, Boba. They probably heard the horns, you know, them horns playing. Yeah, and they oh, were just like, sure. "You know what? I'm out. I don't. I don't want to die." Turns out they died anyway. So yeah, because he blew them up with his epic <laughs> jetpack. With his jetpack that he was wearing the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> that little segue in there. Uh, um, yeah. So overall, I think I'll go. I guess nine out of ten. Um, just because of those couple things, which aren't like terrible, um, but just it just brings it down just a, a, a smidge for me. Um, just a couple, you know, pretty simple things that could have could have fixed a lot of the things that went wrong in the story. Um, not as in bad story, but just what happened. Um, also, Fennec, I liked Fennec coming back. I thought she was cool. She had a lot of really cool scenes, like when she jumped off the cliff and like fired like shot the stormtrooper in the head or whatever that was. My only thing is that it was a little sudden and a little out of nowhere. Like last season we did get the shot of the leg of the boots walking up to her. But up until the very second she literally started speaking and was in the show, that was all we had. So I thought she was just a little bit sudden and a little bit out of nowhere. Um but she kind of made up for it for the really cool action scenes and you know just generally being a badass. Yeah, I liked how um like I forgot, I didn't even I had to ask her name when she came back. <laughs> I straight up forgot. But I do like how they're they're bringing back their own characters. Like she was a new Instead character of, yeah, to this yeah. show. They're doing the same thing with Mayfield. Um, yeah, well, he didn't die though. At least so that was a yeah. Different. But it, it feels like we're in the same world still because like Mando has right, right. like he's been around these people, so it, it makes sense like to see the same sorts of people again. All right. Well, that has already been like an hour. Um, <laughs> so, uh, is there any other other little details you wanted to put in there that you want to talk about really quickly here? Let me give my. I want to throw out my quick match rating <laughs> for it's for tonight. Um, well, I guess a couple nights ago, but I I, I would agree with a nine out of ten um, mm -hmm. for the same type of reasons. I'm a big person about um, like staying in the episode. Uh, what's the word? immersion? I like to be yeah, immersed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the bat or the jetpack thing really took me out of it. <laughs> yeah, you were like yelling about it. We were yeah, just... I, I called him an a hole. <laughs> yeah, and then him trying to go through the force field like three times. That too. Yeah, that really drew me out of it. Even so. after it knocked him out for ten minutes, he was like, "Let yeah, me just yeah. try one more time." <laughs> I don't know. Um, um, but so overall, it's it's right. This is my favorite TV show at the moment. Like, mm -hmm. not even close. That's fair. So I'm still having a great time. It was just the writing, like, ah, that probably shouldn't happen, but I can overlook it yeah. when everything else is, is going so as well. Yeah, and but once Boba Fett showed up and once he was like doing his thing, all of that just went out the window completely exactly. out of my head. I was just sucked <laughs> into just watching that. Um also a couple things I had lecture the Imperial Light Cruiser. Um those are in Rebels. I don't know. Have we seen those in canon or other I, than like in the movies? The light cruiser. I can I can tell you, I haven't, and I've seen pretty much right, everything besides right. Rebels. I remember in our reaction, you were like, "Whoa, what is that?" You're like, "I forget," but I knew that it was the light cruiser from Rebels. 
and you. I said. Uh, I said. I thought they were the same size as Star Destroyers. No, they're, and, they're very. And small. you were like, you're like, dude, not even close. <laughs> <laughs> I think we cut it out, so I didn't yeah. look up. But yeah, uh, I, I didn't know. I had no clue. I yeah. thought they were a new thing. Yeah, that is a light cruiser. Uh, very similar shape or silhouette to the Venator, at least from the bottom, with the like the sort of V cut and then the little inwards bit, um, which is cool. And this is our first time we see the Dark Troopers in action. I thought they were really cool. Awesome. Um, I, I almost said Death Troopers, but then I was like, no, those are the, the ones from Rogue One. Uh, <laughs> but they, the, and, uh, the Dark Troopers were, they were really cool. The, that shot of the eyes and then just the panning, that was really nice. I know um, there were a cannon in a video game. I forget which one. Um, but that's just more things that, like, again, Dave Filoni and all his Star Wars knowledge, <laughs> he, he's bringing it back. Like, he's making the universe feel fleshed out with things yeah. that have already been, like, not super known, but, like, kind of common knowledge between hardcore Star Wars fans. So it's, like, a good payoff for people who did play that game to right, see him right. come to live back. It was. I liked it a lot. Star Wars Commander, I think. Okay. Which I, was, I, I, I mobile, which is a mobile game. Oh, <laughs> um, I didn't know that. And they kind of look like War Machine. So, look, they got the turret on the shoulder. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a little John Favreau for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, Star Wars Commander. Um, <laughs> all right, so that's pretty much all we had on the episode, episode six. Which is chapter fourteen. I forget every time what the chapter uh, is. You could tell me uh, ten times, and I will yeah. forget. We went over it like five times before yeah. we started recording. Um, and we still but, got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, but that was uh, that was it for our discussion uh, slash sequel rant number seven. Of course. Um, thanks for listening to the end or listening to the first ten minutes. Be sure to check out our reaction for this episode, which will be linked below as well as up on the end of the screen here. Um, and we also have reactions for the previous episode and discussions, and you can go check all that out or whatever. Thanks for watching, and we will talk to you soon. Got a salute. You can't see it, but we're saluting. Oh, yeah, I, know. I am saluting. <laughs>